Jedna od najvećih zvijezda pomalo alternativne geopolitike i povijesti u svijetu je William Engdahl. Oštar oponent američke politike, autor je, među ostalima, knjiga Stoljeće nafte, Bogovi novca, Sjeme uništenja i najnovije Uništite kinu. Ovih dana bio je u Zagrebu i evo intervjua koji je dao za paralele. Welcome to Paralele and thank you for joining us, Mr. Thank you. Your new book is about China and how the Western world, if I may say, treats this new rising superpower. Do you believe that at this point we are in the middle of major shift in balance and power in our world today? There's no question we're in the middle of a titanic shift, if you will, a, a tectonic global shift in, in power relationships. The Western world, I would not say, I would say the Uh, leading circles in the United States have become quite alarmed at the China that they largely brought into being 30 years ago by outsourcing American manufacturing and so forth to, to Asia, to China. And now when China asserts its own national sovereignty as a sovereign nation and has quite a bit of economic muscle to back it up and financial muscle, uh, some people in Washington, but especially in Wall Street, are becoming quite alarmed. And that's the theme of the book. Uh, this rise of China and this conflict that you write in your book, mm -hmm. what does it mean for Europe and Western democracy, the Western way of life as we know it today? Well, I think China is, uh, has no thought about exporting uh, China to become a world empire. I, I, I think that's just fantasy in the West. They, uh, what they want is economic stability above all inside China. Uh, 1.3 billion people is a pretty full plate for any government to take uh, responsibility over. And they want security of oil supplies, energy supplies, raw material. And for that they need alliance partners, Russia. They need uh, uh, alliance partners in Brazil, in South Africa, other, other countries. And they're pursuing this, I think, with the BRICS. So that's a, a fascinating new chapter in, in Chinese history. Uh, I guess you planned this book before the escalation of the crisis and conflict in Ukraine. Isn't, yes. uh, isn't Russia still the main villain or the nemesis for the United States and for their allies? Yes and no. If you, if you look at, uh, at the globe in the last few years, the Asia pivot of the Obama administration to focus the military might of the U.S. on China through Australia, through Uh, Vietnam, through the Philippines, through especially Japan with the missile defense and so. Uh, if you look at the Hong Kong Umbrella Revolution, the Occupy Central, if you look at the protests in Xinjiang from the uh, ethnic Muslim populations or parts, parts of it, uh, China is very much a target of, of, of Washington, of the Pentagon, of the CIA and State Department. Russia and China in combination is a mixture that becomes enormously formidable because Russia has the raw materials, the oil, the gas, but they also have the nuclear strike force, the only nation on earth that has the nuclear strike force still intact from the Cold War that can challenge the United States militarily. China does not yet have that. So if China is pitted against Russia, Washington has no problem divide and conquer. The Pentagon can play with each, uh, like with a mouse uh, at will, more or less, I'm exaggerating. But uh, Russia and the Ukraine, that is a second front in what I consider a war against Eurasia. Mm -hmm. And Brzezinski said this back in 1997, the Grand Chess, chess Board, that Eurasia is the only place on the planet where the population, the skill level, the educated Uh, labor force, the raw materials, the, uh, everything uh, could present the only challenge to American sole superpower hegemony. And that's precisely what U.S. foreign policy is forcing to come together, China and Russia, in a speed that is amazing to some. Uh, not to me, but uh, I think some people are shocked. So the operation of the State Department and, and the U.S. Uh, in Ukraine was designed Number one, to split the European Union from Russia mm -hmm. from economic cooperation, which was growing quite strongly in the last years, and to make Russia into an enemy image, but it's having the ironic effect of turning Russia to the east, closer to China. 
So now they just a week ago signed Putin and, and President Xi in China, signed a second mega uh, holy grail gas agreement, uh, which would more than double the potential amount of Russian gas into the Chinese economy over the next years, and other agreements as well. So the, the military cooperation between Russia, China, the other cooperation. The Ukraine operation was made in Washington. Gorbachev said this uh, in a very blunt speech in Berlin last week on the 25th anniversary of the Berlin Wall. And uh, Putin has said it repeatedly. Okay, let's go a little bit into history. Uh, mm -hmm. This year we marked 100 years since the First World War. Yeah. You believe that the railway between Berlin and Baghdad, that project was important for what happened in 1914. That project was meant to connect Germany with Persian oil fields in Ottoman Empire. Yes, it, uh, especially the Ottoman Empire. But the, what the German uh, archaeologists uh, and German intelligence discovered is that Deutsche Bank and the German government backing Deutsche Bank had rights within a treaty agreement with the Ottoman uh, Empire uh, with the Sultan to 20 kilometers either side of the Baghdad railway and that railway went directly through Mosul and the uh, vast oil fields in today's Iraq. Uh, the fields where ISIS is, is, uh, you know, is battling away today. And uh, the British knew that that was where the oil was as well. They had converted the Royal Navy, or in the process of converting the Royal Navy from coal to oil, which would give them a huge advantage uh, tactically over any other navy. So that, uh, and the evidence is, is uh, doc documented in, in my writings, that uh, provided one of two uh, causes belly because that would make Germany independent of the Royal Navy, the British control of the seas. You are also advocating that the decision to drop nuclear bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945 had implications beyond the ending of the Second World War. It's clear uh, from all evidence we have today that the bomb was not dropped to end the war with Japan. The war with Japan was over. It was dropped to send a signal to Stalin, to send a signal, I think, to the entire world, we are the sole superpower. And uh, as I wrote in one of my books, not 1944 at the Bretton Woods Conference, but in August 1945, we had the dawn of the dollar system, the uh, American century, as Henry Luce of Time magazine called it. Uh, you're basically challenging some of the widely accepted truths from the official history. Would you call yourself, is it fair to call you a history revisionist? Well, I'm not trying to revise history. I'm trying to tell the truth oh, okay. as, as best I can discover it. So uh, I don't know quite what a revisionist is, to be honest. Okay. You also oppose uh, the commonly accepted theory about oil creation below the Earth's core. Mm -hmm. uh, most experts support that theory. Some of them mm -hmm. doesn't agree, but uh, yeah. what do you believe in? The origins of hydrocarbons, which includes oil, gas, it includes coal, it includes uh, tar sands, mm -hmm. comes not from dead dinosaur detritus or, or algae or, or such that the fossil fuel theory maintains. By the way, there's no rigorous scientific proof that dead dinosaurs transform into petroleum or, or gas. Uh, the Russians, back during the Cold War, had a mandate to make Russia energy independent from the West, especially in oil. That's one thing Stalin was very keen on, and he gave a mandate in the 50s. And I've developed contact with a number of the Russian scientists, uh, the geophysicists, the, uh, the geochemists, and so forth, who uh, worked for years on this. And what they discovered, and they've demonstrated this repeatedly, is that petroleum comes from deep in the bowels of the earth, under the mantle, and it's forced up through enormous temperature and pressure as a gas first, and then it combines with ferrite or other uh, uh, elements and gets transformed either into oil or into coal or into even diamonds, which is a, the carbon. Yeah. Uh, and gets pushed up toward the top of the earth because it seeks the uh, uh, way out and the optimal way out and then it gets trapped into little pockets of the earth that are called uh, deposits of oil or gas 
And the idea that uh, oil is, is from dinosaur to treat us is absurd. If you think about the world rigorously, we're running into oil almost every place you drill a hole. The Gulf of Mexico, the uh, area off uh, Haiti uh, is where three tectonic plates clash together, and that's a very active area and allows the fissures in the earth to let the oil come, come uh, upward. Uh, offshore Brazil, uh, the Middle East is swimming in oil that's been undeveloped. And the U.S. strategy of the big four, the Anglo-American strategy for, for the past uh, decades has been to control the oil so that other powers do not get oil independence. And that's what they're trying to do with China in terms of Africa. That's what they're trying to do uh, uh, around the globe. You also believe, I could even say that uh, it's a cornerstone of your books and your theories that basically oil and the claim for oil is in the middle of everything that is going on in the Middle East and uh, well, North, certainly uh, the Middle East, North, yeah. North Africa, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a popular belief here as well. Okay. Henry Kissinger said something in the 1970s when he was the most powerful man in Washington. Nixon was being watergated, so the Secretary of State ran the show. He said, if you control the oil, you control entire nations. Uh, now there's oil and gas been discovered in the eastern Mediterranean, offshore Lebanon, offshore Syria, uh, offshore Greece, and uh, Cyprus, Israel even. So there's a whole new domain, and uh, perhaps uh, there's vast quantities of oil and gas in the Adria, uh, offshore Croatia. Uh, I don't know how, I don't think it's been extensively explored, but... Uh, uh, it's, we're running into oil, we're not running out of it. Thank you very much, Mr. Engel. Thank you.